Hey guys, I gotta tell you about this awesome card game. It's called Hip Hops. It's all about beer. It's super fun to play with your friends while sipping on some tasty brews. If you like beer, you want this game. Get it at hiphops.cards and use promo code Ritual Misery for free worldwide shipping. Hello, and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast. This is the show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Kent, and again, I am without Amos, but I do have a guest, my girlfriend Stephanie. Hi! How are you, Stephanie? Good. I'm doing very awesome. have my awesome TARDIS blue hair that I got this morning. (laughs) (laughs) We're good. (laughs) Awesome. So, man... Another long week, of course, but I'm not super stressed about this week. This week was was pretty productive for me. I mean, it was a bit chaotic, but a lot got done, and I am feeling really good. Finally. <laughs> um, yeah, so how, I don't know. How, how was your week? Beer first. Beer first? <laughs> beer always. Not just beer first. Beer always. That explains how dull my week was. Um, yeah, no, my um, I started up school again. My semesters are split up, so I had a, a break. And I started up again. Online classes suck. <laughs> yeah, see, I don't know. I, uh, Me, when it comes to college, I prefer online classes. I just, don't. Just because I can, I can sit there in my boxers and... And just not I, have to leave the house. I can sit there wonderful. naked, tipping away on my computer, and it doesn't matter. But I don't feel like I take anything away from it. Oh, yeah. See, you you like the lectures and things. I, I yeah. I'm I'm you know I'm fine watching a video. That's you know that's good. Or just reading a text. Yeah, I mean it's it's not all bad. I do learn a lot of things. I learned a lot more the last few classes than I thought I learned. And this semester, I'm taking. Uh, business course and one of the forum posts asked um to watch a video about steve jobs and he's just talking about entrepreneurs and what it takes to be you know a businessman Uh uh-huh and uh one of the questions our professor you know posed to us was uh uh name a successful entrepreneur okay so like uh steve jobs or somebody yeah no Everyone else was like Steve Jobs and Oprah Winfrey, you know, great to them. Kudos. They are extremely famous and extremely successful at what they do. Sure, sure. But in my eyes, I was a little different. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to pick someone that I know of who was actually on your guys' show. Um, Francis. I can't remember his last name. Madeira? Yeah, Francis Madeira. Madeira? Hip hop. Awesome. Oh. So I picked him and I was I brought up the point of kickstarter and how awesome it is in this day and age that we can bypass banks and put a product out in an internet age and he is a successful business owner right right and how he went through his little stages obviously it's a 250 word post so i didn't go into great detail but it was still a lot of fun to bring up someone and a lot of people actually responded Asking about the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you mentioned the podcast in the yep. post, and a lot of people were really interested in that. Yeah. They were like, well, what do you what do you think? Is your boyfriend a successful entrepreneur? And I was like, no comment. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I actually just haven't commented yet. <laughs> no, that that would be awesome if I was making money on this podcast. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we cover our cost, but that's really about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're, we're too small as yet to have sponsorships and things like that. Um, Are you saying that I'm a bully in class? Oh, Strength. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Strength says on- online classes take away from all the benefits of being bullied in and around a real class time. Oh, um, you're saying I would get bullied. Right, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. You know, so it, it, it gets rid of the, the schoolyard bullies, I guess. Um, I mean, that's a valid point. Uh, but th- then you, you have to deal with o- online trolls. Yeah, so, I, uh, it yeah. kind of evens out. I, guess. I actually had an issue with my with my last history professor with him, not realizing that netiquette is a thing and tone is a thing. <laughs> right. So when he basically said, "Where the hell did you learn how to write essays?" He was being cruel. <laughs> 
So your professor was trolling you? Yes. Oh, man. <laughs> he was being an ass. <laughs> <laughs> it was not a good day. Man, that sucks. <laughs> well, in between doing schoolwork, did you find time to do some geeky stuff? Yeah. Um, I, I, I fell back into the Doctor Who verse. Of so course. Of I, course. I, I, you, well, you started the show talking about your TARDIS blue hair. Yeah. So. And uh, <laughs> so I, I went like in the last week, probably in the middle of the first season with the ninth doctor not the classic series but <laughs> right. yeah I, i've basically gone through three doctors in a week and a half so <laughs> yeah I, I think you might have a problem and, and i found time to read and i actually bought and finished it's uh the doctor who's the dalek handbook Ah, uh-huh. okay. So it's like a textbook, basically, about yes, the Daleks. It was, oh, I'm sorry, I said it wrong. Daleks. You have to say it right. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to make you say the other word. <laughs> it's the safe word. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so how was it? Was it good? As good as the beer that you're drinking right now? <laughs> I like my beer. Um, yeah, no, it was really entertaining. It was really interesting. Um, a lot of concept art as to how they did it back in the 60s mm-hmm. putting a person in so so was the book more about the making of yes. like behind the scenes or did it deal with the fictional history of both of the, okay both so it, it was had, a good mix yeah it had a lot to do um with the concept art the making of the thought process behind them pitching the story because originally they weren't going to put the Daleks on there because they were like we don't want any you know big-eyed alien monsters this is an educational show okay so yeah they tried to be an educational tv series when it first started they they uh they kiboshed the idea for the daleks for a long time according to the book and then they uh finally went with it and then they went with the progressions on how they actually designed a person in the dalek acting and moving and the uh plunger Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it still looks like a plunger. It is. It's a sick plunger. <laughs> and they point out very obviously that it is that it is awesome. Um, yeah, Strength says no episodes this year of Doctor Who, just a Christmas special. Sh- I haven't seen it yet. Shh, shh, shh. <laughs> it's the many no husbands spoilers. of her song, right? Like, I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Um, basically, as soon as they took it off Netflix, I was abandoned until I realized they had it on Amazon Prime, and I haven't bought it yet. <laughs> yeah, well, no need to. We we can stream it for free. Well, no, the men, no the newer ones. Oh, the, the newer ones, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they'll be on there soon enough, I'm sure. Um, so my geeky <laughs> thing of the week is actually something that you participated in as well. We went to see the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, and. I, <clears throat> I was kind of hesitant about the movie. I wanted to see it just because, I mean, you know, it's a geeky movie and I got to see it. Um, it's on the list. <laughs> yeah. and But I was hesitant because the the one that came out a couple years ago was kind of not good. So I was afraid that this one would be just more of the same. And um, no, I was pleasantly surprised. This was the 80s cartoon brought to life. <laughs> <laughs> and I I watched I'm pretty sure I've watched every episode of that when I was like 11 years old 11 12 13 however many years it ran and oh my god I was I was 11 again sitting in the theater I was just grinning the entire time this movie is not a good movie by any stretch well it's not a great movie by any stretch it's, it's a popcorn movie yeah but oh my god like I was just sitting there like a little boy just <laughs> grinning the entire movie it was so much fun definitely the funnest time in the theater I've had in 2016. We've seen quite a few movies so far this year. Yeah, we have. <laughs> no, I, I did think it was a good movie, and we walked out in first words out of your mouth. All right, first impressions. Mine, it's it's one big 80s reference. Yeah, yeah, it, it was. It was. There was and a lot of, lot of throwbacks to... Not in a bad way. Yeah, yeah, a lot of throwbacks to the original cartoon series, mm-hmm. and uh, it was just... It, man, it was just so much fun. If, if you like the old school Ninja Turtles cartoons and things, I recommend it. If, if you're if you're looking for like an Oscar worthy good movie, then it's not. The, right. Yeah, just pass it up because it's <laughs> it's not gonna it is not gonna please you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was a good time. So 
let's move on to something that I didn't do this week, but you did. You watched a TED Talk this week. And, what? and you didn't. I didn't. <laughs> Actually, I think I probably watched one or two in the beginning of the week and then just, yeah. I, but I here's the thing. You probably watched more TED Talks in our lifetimes than <sighs> I ever have, but I just so happened to watch one 30 minutes ago. Yeah. So what did <laughs> what, you watch? Um, so it was um, Cosmin... Mihayu? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, another TED speaker with an impronounceable <laughs> name. <laughs> I'm oh, probably man. pronouncing it very close. Anyway, so the, the title is, you know, Physical Therapy is Boring. Let's play a game instead. Okay. So for years, I've had an issue with my wrist, wasn't able to use it, had so many doctors tell me that I had to have surgery, et cetera, et cetera. It wasn't curable. <sighs> Finally, one doctor here decided, like, well, maybe it's a nerve problem. Started poking up the nerve into my back and realized, oh, I had a shifted disc in my neck. Yeah. Went to a physical therapist. He adjusted me. Problem solved. Like, uh, immediately. I yeah. could yeah. go from not being able to put any sort of pressure on my wrist to doing push-ups. And I'm not a small girl. So, yeah, that was, was amazing. One session. Pretty amazing, yeah. I went to three weeks of session with him, and then as soon as I left, I didn't do any of my physical therapy stuff, and that's basically what this guy is saying. Like, he was a kid in first grade, broke his arm, got out of the cast. For six additional weeks after that, couldn't move his arm because he didn't do his physical therapy. Right. Nobody right. wants to do the redundant, repetitive, idiotic non-idiotic moves they have a point but his thing was basically take a connect uh camera from like an xbox okay and uh it tracks your movements and it makes a game so for kids for the movement that he had to do when he was a kid when he broke you know just elbow flexing where you're a little bee and you have to fly over the flower and then avoid the other bugs and move your move your thing. <laughs> or if you're an elderly person, because he brought this up too, like, you know, 80% of elderly people are at risk of falling. So they had this online bidding game <laughs> where you oh could like take in part in an auction. <laughs> Oh wow! That's oh, it's, so, so it's like the home shopping network, yes. real time bidding. Yes, where you Fun. had to stand up in your chair that t- to say that you're interested, and then oh, sit boy. down properly in your chair, and it would track your spine and all this. <laughs> like, That's pretty great, actually. It's amazing. I thought it was really cool. And basically, at the end of the show, the guy was another guy came up like, "Oh, thank you for showing us all this." Now, how much would this be? It's like, well, it's a software program it links online they have it connected to like nine trial clinics around the u.s Hmm. um and then you just have to buy the little camera and i assume you could probably hook it up so that it works with any motion sensing camera because that's all that the connect is is a sure well in in being a uh, microsoft product i mean it's going to be compatible with with uh you know that particular camera is going to be compatible with (laughs) with, um, PCs, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and no, I'm just I'm just Tardis supporting. There's no Smurfs here. <laughs> yeah. So so yeah. Dylan in the in the chat says, "Holy shit, there's a Smurf <laughs> in the room with you." Um, yeah. It's it's um my girlfriend with her Tardis blue hair, as she announced at the beginning of the show. Yes. Yes. Get it right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so very cool. Uh, I really wish that I had watched a TED Talk this week, so I'd have one to, to talk about yeah. as well. But, uh, you know, that's okay. That's okay. We did prepare something uh, kind of fun for the show. Uh, we're going to we're gonna test each other's knowledge on subjects that we're supposedly <laughs> proficient in, experts in, Don't maybe? say experts. This is going to be horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and start by, by asking you, 
questions. We'll keep score and we'll see we'll see who who comes out on top in the end of this. Who um, wins? <laughs> yeah, it's funny that you say who oh, wins. Oh, let me guess. Let me guess. I think I bet the chat realm can guess <laughs> what your topic's gonna so be. So let me just kind of <laughs> peek over your shoulder here and see what the chat realm says about your questions. <laughs> yeah. So th- forgive me, I've never seen any classic who. <laughs> Well, we'll we'll see. We'll see what you know. Um, some of these questions are going to be easy. Some of them are going to be hard, and most of them are probably going to be, you know, middle road, whatever. So let's see. Yeah. I'm going to quiz you on your Doctor Who knowledge, Ooh. in case you guys couldn't figure that out. <laughs> All right. So the first question: Which doctor was fond of fish fingers and custard? Oh yeah, uh huh. Matt Smith. <laughs> and what number doctor? Eleven. Okay. <laughs> All right. Easy. Yeah, I watched I, that episode like two hours ago. Oh, really? Oh, <laughs> damn it. See, I should have known better. Uh, all right. So that's one for you. All right. Here, here's one a little bit harder probably, but mm-hmm. you're probably still going to get it. What planet are the Daleks Scarrow. originally from? Scarrow. Okay. Good, good, good. All right. All right. Um, and this is super. This one's going to be super easy. Who is known as the Impossible Girl? The impossible girl is a uh, girl uh, is uh, Clara Oswin Oswald. Oswald, see, <laughs> damn it! I was only gonna give you half credit if you didn't get her last name, <laughs> Clara Oswald. <laughs> All right, this one I think is gonna be a little bit harder for you because you gave the disclaimer that you don't know classic Who. It's classic well. Who, yeah. Is which, it Tom Baker? <laughs> which doctor? <laughs> which doctor originally had K nine as a companion? It's Tom Baker. It's the fourth doctor. Son of a bitch. It was Sarah Jane. <laughs> okay. God damn it. Uh, this thank doesn't bode well for my chances at, at beating her. All I do have the... to say is thank you for the Doctor Who encyclopedia that you got me for this. <laughs> right. Because that's the it's all my fault. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Um, uh looks like we're having stream problems again mm. so hopefully it comes back um so the next question will be super super easy this is basically a gimme what planet does the doctor come from the doctor yes so he's a time lord from gallifrey obviously oh uh, yeah duh <laughs> I think he's been more on Earth than Gallifrey, though. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt. He was exiled there. Did you know that? They took the TARDIS away from him and exiled him on Earth. This was classic Who, by the way. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> for, for bonus points, because I did have that question written down and I overwrote it. Oh. What doctor was that? I believe it was the third one. Son of a bitch. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Did I win? <laughs> well, we're not done with the questions yet, but, but you you got the bonus question right already. Okay, so the next one now. We're, we're halfway through the quiz. What race is frequently employed as a mercenary police force? Oh, fuck. They're the rhino ones. Um, yeah, what are they called, though? <sighs> Douchebags. Um, <laughs> nope, not going to get it. <laughs> It is the Jadoon. Uh, I could I could speak their language. <laughs> oh, really? Go ro to go ro ro, go ro no. I ro. I think you're. I think you're. I don't think you have the accent down. I think no, you're, no. I, I think I, your your inflection, uh, you know, the the high pitchedness of your voice. Ro, ro, ro. Oh, that's better. <laughs> that's closer. I understood that. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. So the next question. Who is the doctor's longest serving companion? Consecutively or in in total, longest serving companion. Susan? Sarah Jane. It would be Sarah it's, Jane. It was either Susan or Sarah Jane. Um Susan because she's she's his granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so... No, wait, th- is she? That I have no idea. All I right, am nowhere right, near around. that level of Whovian. All right, so the next one. What does TARDIS stand for? Time and relative space in... Oh. Dimension in space. 
So all together now. Time and relative dimension in space. Ding, ding, ding. Very good. If the war doctor followed the normal incarnation numbering scheme. War doctor is eight and a half. He would be nine. Okay. Then t- nine would be That's 10. That's what I was looking for. 10 would be 11, 11 <laughs> right. would be 12, because he was supposed to be the 12th incarnation, because there's only supposed to be 12 incarnations of the doctor. Right, and right. Chris Picol- ah, Chris. Peter Capaldi was not supposed to exist. <laughs> right, right, right. But he got, like, he d- didn't he, like, double his. No. Clara, no, she's not. Something. Um, because she so, never travels, she doesn't travel with him once she goes into his time stream. She's just kind of there. Hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, talking about Clark. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That that makes. I can see where you, where um, Andre would say that it was Clara because she's you know throughout throughout history she, she keeps appearing. She's scattered throughout his timeline. Right. So I yeah. I, that, you could make an argument for that. I get. I get that. Mm-hmm. All right. So last question. This this is uh, this one should be pretty easy. Who is the central character in the spinoff series Torchwood? Torchwood is uh, Captain Jack Hartness, the face of Bo. That is correct. Well, it was before he was the face of Bo. Long before. Or after, depending on depending on De- how you look depending at. Depending on time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's add these up. <laughs> So you got seven out of ten plus the bonus. So Yay. your total score will be eight. What do you have in store for me? <laughs> I'm I'm almost afraid. <laughs> I was kind. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> so drink up, because I'm gonna take that away from you in two seconds. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> You can't cheat. No. Oh my God. Okay, so I'm don't, I'm guessing that this cheat. is going to be a beer quiz. Yes, this is a beer quiz. Okay. So now that I, because I even wrote in here without looking at your hand, take the bottle away from you. Okay, me. got it, got it. So what <laughs> three hops are in Sierra Nevada Pale Ale? Oh my God. Oh, what, can I get partial credit? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go with Cascade. Okay. Um. Uh, let's see. Uh, I will say Kent Golding. Probably wrong. And, um, you know, the green flowery ones. (laughs) (laughs) No, no one, no. Damn Um, it. Yeah, I suck at, I suck at the, uh, the different types of hops. By the way, Chat Realm, River Song was never considered a companion. Ah. Even though she is the doctor's wife, she was never truly considered a companion. Yeah, the doctor never like picked her up, like basically kidnapped well, her from Earth. Y- yeah, he, he would pick <laughs> her up because she would call and then go, "Hello, sweetie." <laughs> yeah, um, so, but I don't think I don't think River Song was ever considered a companion. So. All right. So back to beer. Back to beer. Um. So no, you were you were incorrect. You only, you get one third of a point. Because cause you got one, right, out of three. It's um, Cascade, uh, Magnum, and Perel. Magnum? Mm-hmm. Magnum makes hops now? Magnum. Is it like really big hops? That's what it says. <laughs> Magnum. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. If no, getting I'm getting the joke. I'm just choosing to slide over it because if we want, we could be cruel right now. <laughs> oh damn. Oh god. Okay, moving on. Okay, so you get a third of a point. Write that okay. down. One third. Okay. <laughs> so, we'll call that point three. Um, <laughs> right. Okay. Um, what is the strongest beer in the world? Oh my gosh. Okay. This. <laughs> I should know this because we were just talking about this a few weeks ago. We were. It was like, it was I'm this gonna, weekend. <laughs> nuclear penguin something. Um, tactical nuclear penguin. Is that your answer? That's what I'm going to go with. I'm, I don't know if it's the current strongest one. Take a guess of what the uh, ABU, a, ABV is. Uh... 56%. You are incorrect. Damn. By a bit. Oh, okay. So the world's strongest beer is actually 
a Scottish brew from Brewmeister called Snake Venom. Oh, Snake Venom. Right, 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 right. At 67.5%. That is insane. That is absolutely (laughs) insane. (laughs) Anybody that's had a 12% beer knows that that, holy shit, is very strong. You taste it and it knocks your tongue on its ass. (laughs) Yeah, it tastes you back. (laughs) Like, it takes a bite out of you. It says, "Mm, well, I like you. I have another sip. Mm -hmm. Uh, What was it? Fit uh, sixty what? sixty-seven point five percent. This is God. this is stronger than some liquors. <laughs> Absolutely, that's that is insane. Okay, what? All right, what do we got? Yeah. What, what's next? <laughs> what is the top-selling craft beer brand in the U.S.? Top-selling craft. Yeah. This. Sh- yeah. Uh, mm. This is where we can get into an argument about the definition of craft, but I am going to go ahead and say Samuel Adams. You are correct. All right. My good sir. Some people would argue that it's not craft, but I I consider it craft. I I think... They um, began as craft. Whether or not they're considered craft still. Yeah, I I, I call Jim Cook the proprietor of of Samuel Adams. I call him the Willy Wonka of beer. <laughs> uh, he, cause he, that's kind of how he is. And if you've ever seen an interview with him, I mean, the guy is just, he's just a kid when he starts talking about beer. He's mm-hmm. just, I would love to meet him. I would love to interview him on ritual misery. That'd be so awesome. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, that'd what, be amazing. That? Um, so branching out into the world, what is the top selling beer in the world? Bud Light. Actually, Bud Light was number five. Shit. Budweiser was number three. Okay. Okay. Um, mm. So, all right. With that in mind, I will say Heineken. No. Damn. Heineken wasn't even on the list. What? It's a Chinese beer. Ooh. <laughs> okay. That, yeah, I guess that. It was one of the ones I actually had to Google to make sure this list was legit because I never heard of this beer. It's called Snow Beer. Snow Beer. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. This is, uh, this it's, is drawing on distant past for me. I, I, I knew this yeah. a long time ago, I'm sure. It's, it's probably the Budweiser, Anheuser, Bush version in China. And because there's so many fucking right. people yeah, in yeah, China, yeah, yeah. of course it's going to. Absolutely. Yeah. Because they, they've only, I'm sure they only have a handful of brewers in China. Mm-hmm. And so it's, you know, market flooded and all of the millions <laughs> of people. <laughs> so I like chat room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, strength is strength is usually a, good, a pretty good contributor in, in chat room for RMP. Um, yeah, strength says, "Does your beer even lift, bro?" Uh, it, it, probably mine in reference is, to the high is, ABV beers. Yeah, mine is wimpy. It's it's only oh, but it's tasty though. It's so tasty. It's I it's love Stone's IPAs. yeah. It's it's Stone's go to IPA is their session IPA. If if you like, uh, well, if you like IPAs but you don't like the really strong hoppy. IPAs, that this is a good one to check out. This is a a really good session. All right, so going for an easy one, and I really hope you get this. (laughs) Okay. It's another acronym one. So what what does this mean? Okay. What does uh, ABV stand for? Alcohol by volume. Yay, give yourself a point. Yeah, an easy one. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then I'm going to drop you down a peg again. Oh, crap. Uh, When (laughs) was the first beer bottle sold? First beer bottle? Bottle? Yeah. When? What year was beer first bottled and sold? <sighs> oh, I'll give you. My I'll goodness. give you within two or three decades. If you can get within within two or three decades. Yeah, if you can get within oh. that, I'm gonna be surprised. <laughs> oh my! Um, <laughs> bottled. Yep. And I imagine that the first bottles were not the bottles as we know today. Uh, so I'm thinking that that the term bottle will be used perhaps more generically maybe not even a glass bottle maybe it was a a uh, like clay or something like that so and especially you giving me a leniency of decades um i man this is just a shot in the dark i'm going to say 1500 <laughs> couple centuries off (laughs) yeah i I figured um according to wikipedia it's 1850 
1850. See, oh, man. See, I talked myself out of this because my original guess was going to be 1885. You would, yeah, I would have accepted that. <laughs> yeah. Dang it. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Hopefully, hopefully the next one's an easier one. Um, what are the four main ingredients in beer? The four main ingredients is going to be water, mm-hmm. malt. Typically, a, a, a grain malt like a, a barley malt, or it could be wheat malt, any malted grain, uh, hops, and yeast. Yay! Give yourself a point. Yay! <laughs> um, I'm going to butcher this name. I am so sorry. <laughs> what year did the St. Sixtus Abbey of Vespalater and Brewery? open not the year the abbey oh opened gosh. what year did the brewery the open brewery okay for for those that don't know Ves Flederen is one of the trappist brewers they're in belgium it's a group of monks that make beer and it is very widely accepted their uh Ves Flederen 12 is very widely accepted worldwide as the best beer on the planet um and i have been to their Grounds and drink their Vesflutter in 12. He brought me home an eight and it was glorious. <sighs> yeah. The eight is really, really, really good, but the 12 is like he this couldn't, step above. Oh he gosh. didn't, he didn't love me enough it's at also, the time it's, to bring me home a 12. Yeah. And it's, well, and it's not only the best beer on the planet, it's one of the most difficult Hardest. beers to acquire. Um, so, what year did the brewery open? Yes. I. Mm. Man, I I, I want to say sometime in the 1800s, probably early 1800s. I want to say like 1835. I'll give you it because you were within three years. <laughs> oh, my God. It's 1838. <laughs> Nice. I get full credit for that one? You get full credit. Awesome. Okay. Man, I was, I'm Yours actually surprised hard. I got it so close. Yours are hard. Um... <laughs> So this is a throwback. If you don't remember this, I'm going to call Francis and smack you upside the head. Oh, God. So this is a throwback from the quiz you guys did with Francis when he was on the show. Oh, yeah, that's right. When I think it was the second time we had Francis on. We gave him a beer quiz. Yeah. And, and that was uh, a lot of fun. Yeah. So same question taken. What years was were what years were the duration of the U.S. prohibition? Son of a <laughs> Son of a bitch. Okay. So it, it'll be in the 1930s. Uh, I'm going to say 1933 to 1936. You're right with the fact that you said it started when it actually ended. <laughs> Uh, okay, so it ended in, in 1933. Yes, yes, it did. And what year did it begin? It began in 1920. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. It went that long. Mm-hmm. It was 13 years. 13 yeah. long Yeah, I'm glad I wasn't years. alive then. Well, why do you why do you <laughs> think Boardwalk Empire is... Boardwalk Empire is still going on, right, guys? <laughs> That's a good question. I'm not, I don't know if that show is still going or not. Maybe. Maybe. Uh. Either, either way, you got it wrong. And yeah, they had a lot of material to go with Boardwalk Empire. So yeah. Oh, <laughs> and the, the source that you were that you were looking at for the prohibition. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yep. All That's- right. So this is the last one. Okay. And uh, this is the difficult one. <clears throat> Name all eleven Trappist breweries and where they are from. Oh my God. Or where they're located. They're oh shit. There are 11 of them now, aren't there? There are 11. I looked at it that and is, I was shocked. God. All like, right. When I lived in Europe, there was, there was only seven. And actually, just a few months before I left Europe, actually, because we, we were both over in Europe, mm-hmm. um, we left almost exactly the same time. Uh, just before we left Europe, two, three, three more opened. Uh, two in Europe and one in the United States, believe it or not. Um, so, all right. So let me see how, how far I can get. Uh, all right. So we already talked about this fluttering. Uh, oh, you, you want to know where they're from as well? Yeah, right? I want to know where they're from. Okay, so Vesfletteren is in Belgium. Okay. Um, La Trappe 
is in the Netherlands. Chimay is Belgium. Rochefort, Belgium. Uh, uh, Orval is Belgium. Uh, oh my gosh. Oh, how, why am I drawing such a blank on this? I'm five in. I should easily get at least two more. Um. Yes. Wow. This is really, really high quality entertainment. Watching me <laughs> sit here and stumble I'm over. Ev- I'm evil. These wonderful monk brewed blessed <laughs> beers. Um, all right. So Sorry, guys. right now I'm picturing the map of Belgium because the two that I'm trying to think of are also from Belgium, and I'm trying to picture the Google Map route that I had for the longest time of my tour, my Trappist tour, uh, because I did go to all seven of those uh, when I was there, which is really, really round trip is only like a seven hour drive from where I lived in Germany. Seven breweries, seven hours. Right. Uh, Now, you know, of course, that that doesn't include taking the time to visit and and, uh, drink some beers. Drink. Yeah. Um, So that was enough... uh, delay uh man i as horrible as i feel about this i am gonna have to tap out <gasps> on this uh, oh, oh, oh hold on hold on let me let me let me try to scrape together some bonus points i already <laughs> said that those remaining two were in belgium uh, yes. um one of the, the one in the states is in massachusetts just outside of boston okay uh and i cannot remember the name of it i would if I had multiple choice on this, I would be able to tell you which, like what the name of that brewery is. But um, I think it's Saint something. Do you want multiple Saint choice? Remy's, Saint Remy's or something like that? Do you that? want multiple choice? Oh, multiple choice would be... I can, I can whip up a multiple choice. So um, <laughs> Saint Jason's, Saint John's, Saint Joseph's, or Saint James? Well, it's definitely not St. James, because when I hear St. James, I think St. Saint, Saint James' Gate, which is the Guinness Brewery in Ireland, in Dublin, Ireland. Uh, it uh, goes St. Yeah, I, mm. I don't know. Um, go, go ahead and just tell me. St. Joseph's. St. Joseph's, okay. And, and that's the one in Boston, or yeah. outside of Boston? They, they go by, uh, they brew Spencer. Spencer, yeah. that's right. Okay, that's got beer. it. <laughs> All right. So, what what other ones did I miss? What, um, what were the the two in Belgium that the I? Small. Oh, okay. Yep. And um, Akil, is he? Akil, yeah. Akil, yeah. Akil is actually that's the one that I was really beating myself up over because that's the first one <laughs> that I visited. That's what uh, Scotty and I went to. <laughs> so yeah. Um, the one in Austria is um. Sift Engel, Engelsland. I'm awful at pronouncing these things. Um, Engelsdeal. Okay. Is that the one in Austria? Yeah, it's Austria. Okay. Um, another one in the Netherlands, which is a uh, Maria Tovulek. Okay. Okay. And then the Italian one. Oh, that's right. There's one in Italy now. Is a uh, Trafante Abbey. Mm. Yeah, awesome. I can pronounce that one. I'm great at pronouncing Italian things. Yeah, right. <laughs> you only lived in Italy for how many how many years? Seven and a half. Yeah, <laughs> longer than I was in Germany, even. Pretty much. Um, um, all right, so, so yeah, many- I, I I give you partial points for that because you were you were pretty you you've had all their things and. So, yeah, but you weren't very good. Yeah, I was mean. So how many how many points are you gonna award me for for that debacle? I'll, I'll give you I'll give you half. Of, Actually, I'll give you an eighth of a point, or of, no, a seventh of a point. Of a point? Yeah, it's a one point. A seventh of a point. It's for one all point. Of, that was a like a thousand part. Oh my god! Okay. Ten questions, one point. So seventh. So <laughs> how about how about at least give me this that third point that I got earlier? Yeah, let me I'll give round you that up to seven. a full. Let yeah, me round I'll that give up you, to. Okay. <laughs> you still whipped my ass though. <laughs> So that was the last question for me, right? Yes. Okay, so (laughs) I ended up with one, two, three. Please stand by. This podcast is still in beta. If this was a real podcast, it would have been recorded properly. 
please stand by for a post-production ending to this episode. Hey guys, sorry about the end of that episode being messed up. Uh, yeah, I'm just a, I'm a total noob at this recording a live show thing using OBS. Um, yeah, but it was a fun episode, right? I had a good time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, just to, to give away how, how the episode ended, um, you totally whipped my ass in the quiz. Uh, yes, and, and now I question your beer knowledge. Uh, right, yeah, but I don't think anyone's questioning your Doctor Who knowledge. Nope. Um, yeah, you totally beat my ass eight to five. <laughs> um, it was a fun quiz. Uh, I do have to admit, though, my quiz was a hell of a lot harder for you than yours was for me. <laughs> right. Because I was expecting you to be evil, so I, in turn, <laughs> was evil. Because that's just, yeah. <laughs> so yours was a hell of a lot harder than mine, but... <laughs> I honestly expected you to get it because you're a nerd. Yeah, I had you... a couple of senior moments during that quiz. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a little rusty on some of my beer knowledge. Old man. Yeah. Um, but no, you know, the, the episode didn't turn out quite as good as I was hoping um, production value-wise, especially on the video. I mean, anybody watching the video... It, yeah, I'm so sorry. Um, definitely not the best product. Um, have no fear, though. Amos is back, and he's going to put his extreme skills to use. And uh, most of the, the, at least the upcoming episodes, will be produced by him. So, uh, yeah, meaning this guy won't be in charge, and uh, stuff yeah. will be good again. But I'm getting better. I'm getting better. So. Uh, Future episodes produced by me should be quite a bit better than this one was. Um, yeah, any, any last words before we close this up? No, because it's been so long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, that's our show. Uh, be sure to follow us on Twitter. I am at RM underscore Del Noche. Yeah, and uh, I'm at Sassien. It's S A S C I E N N E. Long story. I am on there though. Yep. I do tweet. And, yeah, <laughs> uh, more more lately than she has uh, uh, in quite some time. Yeah. Um, follow Amos at Ethan Kane. You can follow the show at Ritual Misery. Submit ideas for the show on our subreddit, ritualmisery.reddit.com. Call and leave us a voicemail at 567-698-7672. You can find all of these links and more at our website, ritualmisery.com. Thanks to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Thanks for listening. For Stephanie, for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. Bye, guys. See ya. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> <laughs>